Okay, it is another cloudy day here in Western New York. So this makes a perfect day to relive last fall when it was a little bit warmer out here. So this illustration has a little bit of a story to it. Uh, one of my good friends growing up, Andy, this is Andy in the illustration, he um, is a farmer and we've been lifelong friends and he works so hard and I just wanted to pay tribute to him and all his effort in being a farmer. So this is a gift piece that I will be giving to him and I really wanted to make it special for him. So it is on a larger format size. This is a 10 inch by 15 inch um, piece of Crescent Illustration Board. I am using a number five, as you can see from the white on my index finger. I'm really pressing hard. Like I said in my last video, I have incredible amount of heavy pressure. So this cold press illustration board really can handle pretty much anything you throw at it. As you can see throughout uh, the demonstration, um, the amount of water I put on this and gouache and ink and the graphite, it, it, it holds pretty well. I've used Crescent Illustration Board for decades and it's one of my favorites to do some heavy illustration work on. So I, I feel so bad. Um, I, this is one of the first videos that I shot for my YouTube channel and unfortunately, I only shot just so far in the illustration process. I got just a little ways in with the watercolor and I thought I had filmed the rest, but unfortunately I didn't and I feel so bad. So I only got bits and bobs of the illustration process with the watercolor, but I still have the piece um, so I can go over it with you and discuss the rest of the illustration process and I think that would be helpful because there's some techniques I use that I think are fun and I would really like to share them with you. So it's unfortunate that I don't have that footage, but I do have um, a good amount to show you uh, and I think that that will be helpful. So as you can see from the photo inset here, this is the photo reference that I used this is, again, in the Alba Mucklands, and it gets really dry and hot, even for Western New York. And I wanted to use this photo because it showed the machinery. It showed the onions. It showed his puppy. And it showed a happy farmer. Even though he works really hard, he is happy. And I think that is truly the lifestyle of a farmer. So, using this photo as a reference, I hand sketched uh, to make the photo larger on this illustration board. And doing so, I made sure that I left some room at the bottom because I wanted to make this look like maybe a travel poster or a come visit us poster. Also celebrate the onions and Elba onions because the town, the little itty bitty town is known for its onions. So it's harvest season, I wanted to celebrate that. So all these little text insets help tell the story. And I think when you're an illustrator, you're about telling the story. And I think that makes it special, especially when you're giving it as a gift. I, I measured out um, the top line and the bottom line and I just sketched in the word onion and I wanted to make it look like um, the wiggly roots of the onion, uh, also the tops of the onion, how they flop over when they're ready to pick. 
bring the theme out with the text as well. It makes the composition look so much more interesting. And also the bottom text where it says harvest, that is just like a straight uh, serif text, maybe a Times New Roman. It's just a straight text that I you know, hand drew out. Um, you can find many references on Pinterest for any font. You can also type something up on your computer in a font and then print it out on your printer and use that for a reference as well. So I'm just going over the lines just to make it a little bit more bold and give it a little more of a punch because you'll see what I do with the onion, the word onion. I'm gonna make that, render that, I should say, I'm gonna render that to make it look like onions. So again, playing with text uh, helps tell the story. the word onion I grabbed the number one micron pen and I am adding in some very thin curved lines to help make the letters look like onions I'm bending the lines to emulate the shape of an onion So I'm just adding in a series of these lines. On the onion skin itself, there is a series of lines um, that go from top to bottom, and um, these little veins are, are visible on the onion skin, and I wanted to make sure that I can replicate that. Adding a napkin or a piece of kitchen towel underneath your hand as you work will help for the graphite not to smudge. With the oils on your hand and the texture in your hand constantly moving, your graphite, because this graphite is so soft, the graphite will smudge and smear and I wanted to keep it as sharp as I could while I was overlaying the ink pen. And so to prevent all of that, I just laid down this napkin under my hand.
link to these micron pens below. You can buy them in a variety of sizes. What I like about them is their ink is permanent. For times that I don't want the ink to bleed underneath the paint, the micron pen is pretty solid. It doesn't streak and you can get a nice crisp line with them and for holding the line with water over the top of it, especially several washes. You can also see right here on the close up that I have <laughs> pushed down incredibly too hard on this number one pen and I keep rotating uh, the pen in my hand to try to find the spot that I can put a little pressure on so it hasn't snapped off yet. ahead a little bit so you can see some of the painting process so I inked everything I'm using this really nice brush that snaps uh, I absolutely love this brush uh, it came in a series I'll put the link below but it has several different sizes in it and these are really good brushes it feels good to hold in your hand and the handle is very smooth and it slides in your hand um, and also grips in your hand very good so i'm wetting the whole top of this illustration board with water uh, you'll see that this illustration board can take it um, at the end um, when i show you the final piece i'll talk about uh, it, it warped just a very little bit but it's not a big deal and it only started to bend just a little bit when I was all done when it was drying because it dried uneven because the bottom of the illustration board was dry and the top was wet so it started to curl in just a little bit but not a big deal. 
these blues that I'm using in the sky, I'm actually using the Daniel Smith Fine Watercolors today for the sky. I started with the cobalt teal blue and I'm doing light washes of these and then I added a little bit of cerulean blue also with the Daniel Smith and I'm also gonna be adding some cobalt blue on top as well. I have a little bit of yellow ochre that I've added in just a little bit to the mix. I felt it was a little bit too blue in the sky so I wanted to green it down just a little bit. Uh, so I added in some yellow ochre, just a very, very, very little bit. And it gave it that aged, like postcard blue sky color a little bit. So I'm going right up over the window of the harvester. Because it's a window, you can see through it. It pulls in color from behind, um, through the window behind the cab, and it also reflects colors from the sky in front as well. So adding in the color of the sky right up over the top makes that glass and that cab look like glass, and it's reflective. All right, so down at the bottom and my yellows, I'm using uh, Windsor Newton New Gamboge. I'm also using um, Schmincke's Indian Yellow. And I'm also pulling in some of that lemon yellow here and there, which is a Daniel Smith as well. It's the Hasana Yellow Light. So those I'm pulling in off of my palette and blending them right up into that greenish, um, like that greenish blue color in the sky. Going right up over the text as well, the onion harvest text, because that's gonna be uh, rendered over. Um, the harvest, the word harvest, I chose to do in a dark color anyway, so that didn't matter. But when you're working with watercolors, you wanna preserve some of that transparency. And when I paint in the word onion, um, I want that luminous glow of the yellow as an undertone to shine through um, with the colors I add over the top. And putting the same light colors over the top helps harmonize the piece together. If I used random colors here and there, almost like a coloring book, and kept the color exclusive only in certain areas, the piece wouldn't look, <clears throat> excuse me, piece wouldn't look unified, and it would look very separate. The colors would look very separate from each other. And so having these undertones laid under all of it, it will help tie it all together. So there's some yellow ochre that I added in over to the right hand side. The photograph has the shadowing on that right hand side. So I have a little bit of darker yellow, the yellow ochre on the right hand side and using more of the lemon yellow and the Indian yellow on the left hand side. The harvester is so big it's blocking out some of that sunshine. So I just often mix these colors together, um, sometimes on my palette, sometimes I mix them together right on the illustration board. So I'm putting in these sun-kissed highlights on these trees and hedgerow in the backdrop. So I've got some sap green that I keep pulling in to the mixture a little bit. And also I'm used, uh, the sap green is Windsor Newton and I'm using Daniel Smith's green gold. And for the color I'm adding in right here is uh, another Daniel Smith Jadeite Genuine. And I'm adding that in over the top and because the color underneath 
is still wet, this, as I tap it in with the tippy toe of this paintbrush, it's going to burst and blend in to make it softer in the background. If I wanted some crisper lines, I would wait till the colors I laid down first dried, and then I would get some crisper lines. So at the beginning of the video, I told you that I didn't have a lot of footage, and here's the result of what it looks like when I'm all done with the piece. So again, I feel so bad that I don't have video footage of uh, my illustrating process throughout the rest of this, but I'm gonna show you right now what I did. Okay, here's our finished piece. <clears throat> All right, so before I start with this, I wanted to show you again, because I didn't get a chance to properly show you these watercolor brushes, the, the Pinturals Professional Series, the Pinturals Professional Series, and I used the 10 and the 4 and the double zero. So all these, all three of these have really good springs on them and they're excellent. I just love them. The handle is very soft and get a good grip and also it's very smooth and it's nice to hold in your hand. So I just wanted to show you those because I didn't get to show you those too well in the video. Again, it was like one of the first videos that I filmed uh, for the channel, so I really didn't get a chance to do a proper job on that for you. So after I left you on video, I was in the middle of painting the background and these hedgerows back here. So I just continued to layer up with the sap green and the green gold. And I also added in just a little bit of magenta into the greens, just to make it a little bit darker for some of these underlying shadows that are underneath the hedgerow. Um, adding that in at the bottom gives that, that bush a little bit of a three-dimensional value to it. So that's what I did on here. Um, also, I added in just a little bit in the background here, some lighter color to make it look like a glow, that there's more hedgerow, there's more trees in the background. So I softened that out back there. I think the thing that took me the longest was the onions, rendering all these onions, but I absolutely loved all of it. Uh, I used some yellow ochre and I also used um, some oranges and let's see here. I'll have to show you the oranges or let you know on the screen what the oranges were that I used. I think it was a cadmium uh, orange and also some purple, dioxine purple that I added in as well and mixed up. I really wish I had that footage to show you because it would explain a little bit more. Um, back here for the irrigation system. Um, it's just line work and uh, the onions that hadn't been harvested yet, these were all harvested over here. And so I didn't have a lot of detail over here like I do over here. So you can tell that he went through here first. Some of the onions were laying on the belt. So I wanted to make it look like they were going right up on the belt before he stopped. And I left some light on the wash area on the onions to give it highlight because the sun was so intense in the photo and the onions are shiny. Even though it has muck on them and they're quite dirty, they still are shiny in a lot of the spots on their skin. Um, the puppers, I rendered the puppers, Lily and Andy. Andy always is in red. He loves red, so he's always in red. And uh, let's see the detail, the window, uh, the cab area. Uh, I just looked at it like shapes in the cab. 
So when I painted this in, I just kept looking back and forth at my reference photo and looking at the shapes within the reference photo. And I wasn't so concerned about making sure the shapes were precise because it was very reflective and skewed because this cab is bent and so it skews the colors and the objects inside. So using the photo as reference and just painting what you see. So I think this is like a sweatshirt of his in there and there's a seat in there and some other things, but just the way the color and the, sh the sun comes in, that's how I rendered that. Uh, onions and the dirt of the muck. I didn't use any black in this, um, even for the tire area, I didn't use any black. There's no black in this. I used indigo and Van Dyke Brown, and both of those are Windsor and Newton. And I just made a dark, very, very dark indigo. Um, actually, it's a, a earth down indigo because I have that Van Dyke Brown in there. So, and then for the text, um, this I believe is Indian red that I used over the top of, it uh, looks like cadmium and cadmium orange and um, dioxin purple together to get that um, value change and hue change in there. And my favorite part is the onion, the way I rendered that in, and I know I keep talking about that part, but taking those individual areas where the, where I took the micron pen, those individual areas and in rendering this to make it look like onion skin. So I left it light at the top. I even added some green on some of these tips to make it look like the tops of the onions. So that is sap green. And I used some buff, Windsor Newton buff, and new gamboge, and some Naples yellow to go into these lighter areas. And then I brought this down with some burnt sienna and um, some dioxin purple and um, Indian red down here to make it a little bit darker. So I mix those together. So using the smaller brush, I was able to get some of these individual streaky strokes, just like an onion skin would be. So you would see those striations in the skin. And then down here at the bottom, I just did the same um, color mixture as I did up here for the darks. So again, it is Van Dyke Brown and Indigo Blue, both Windsor and Newton. And I may have added in some of the um, Burnt Sienna as well to just make it harmonize and warm it up a little bit so it wasn't quite so such a cold color. And this truly is the color of the dirt. That's what a muck looks like. It's very dark charcoal looking um, like a, a warm, dark, 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 dark brown, um, almost black. Um, and it's very, very fine powdery. So I wanted to portray that in the word harvest. So that is the illustration. Didn't bleed through the back at all. And you can see there's this is how it worked. But again, when it's in a frame, it straightens right out. So to me, it's not a big deal. I put a lot of washes, a lot of layers on this, and it didn't even go through. So I love this illustration board. I've used it for decades and decades. I've done many of illustrations on this Crescent illustration board and I love it. So once this gets popped into a frame, it just flattens right out and then there it stays. So there we have it. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I apologize for not having all 
of the illustrated footage of the whole thing. Um, unfortunately, sometimes that's the way it goes, I guess, but um, I'm glad I got to explain it to you and I haven't given it to him yet, but I will. And uh, now that I have it, I knew there was a reason why I still had it <laughs> to explain it to you. So um, if you have any, any comments or any questions uh, about any of the colors, any of the products I've used, um, how I did or painted anything, how I drew anything, please ask me. I'm more than happy to help you, more than happy to answer any of your questions. Hey guys, I just wanted to say thank you so much for your... Oh, no. <laughs>